Welcome back Akira Bike Project fans. In the previous video, I built an eight foot long welding fabrication table out of two sort of flat welding tables that will serve as the base for a modular recumbent motorcycle frame jig. In this video, I'll be building the front and rear supports for the frame jig. The front supports and holds the steering column in alignment while the rear holds the rear spindle in the correct position. Both of which are of course critical to the alignment and thus stability of the bike. They'll both be based around this simple plate and post structure, where a large 3 8 inch thick plate gets bolted to the table. A parallel set of 1 by 1 square tubes help hold up a single vertical 2 by 2 post that the adjustable alignment fixtures get bolted to. For the front, a conventional steering column frame jig neck fixture is used, albeit with a longer threaded rod for my design. In the rear, I'll fabricate a custom clamp out of shaft collars and plates for my large diameter spindle. I started off by cutting an 8 inch wide piece with my plasma cutter off of a 1 foot wide plate. These are actually considered flat bar though, not plate, and are actually cheaper than getting a wide plate and, for example, cutting it in half. I cut the 2 inch by 2 inch post and the 1 by 1 parallel bar is real quick on my chop saw and then gave each of the bars a good sanding and cleaning. The flat plate though would prove much more difficult to clean. I tried hitting it first with the flapper disc, which mostly just melts the mill scale and clogs up the disc. I tried one of these hybrid scotch bright sandpaper polishing discs next, which didn't really do any better, but it works fantastic on the bars. I tried more coarse grit flapper discs, a regular rotary sander disc, an abrasive nylon brush, a regular metal wire brush, and even just hand sanding. Well, after making virtually no progress with any of these mechanical removal methods, I stepped back and did some research on how to remove this mill scale. The most popular suggestion, it turns out, is to use vinegar and just let the part sit overnight in it. If you're in more of a hurry, you can use muriatic acid, which is actually hydrochloric acid, and can be found at most hardware stores. I took a trip to the kitchen and stole our vinegar. I put the part in a container and added some vinegar and let it sit overnight. That actually worked surprisingly well, and uh, just a light brushing with the handheld metal wire brush took off the mill scale completely. After a thorough rinsing, the flapper disc made quick work of sanding the surface with the mill scale removed. The parts were all sanded and cleaned now and ready for the next step. I laid out the hole pattern for reference, but I'm not going to center punch and rely on my measurement and lay up here. These certified tables are laser cut to a precision of plus or minus three thousandths of an inch. So I want to get as close to that accuracy as possible. If I'm off on my centers at all and do something like oversize a hole to get it to fit, the whole fixture can be easily misaligned. So I mount the plate on my benchtop mill for drilling, using a stubby quarter inch bit to start with to minimize wandering. I find drilling steel best when it's slow, cool, and hard. That is, keep the speed of the drill bit low. Keep the bit and plate nice and cool using plenty of lubricant and use a lot of force using your chip production to guide your force. Slowly push harder until you are producing nice long curly chips and then ease off to maintain a constant force. Now I need to move exactly 6 inches over to drill the next hole. I'll rely on my milling machine's accuracy for this. You need to remove the play in your table's motion first though, by going in the opposite direction you want to go a few turns, and then reverse the direction. When you reverse the direction, you'll feel the wheel moves easily for a bit, and then suddenly is harder to turn. This is the wheel engaging the gears and removing the slop from wear. Once you are moving in the correct direction with the play removed, you line your bit back up with the hole you just drilled by plunge testing it, and then proceed. Don't overshoot or turn the wrong direction, you'll need to start over. Then to move the 6 inches, I just counted the rotations of the table, 60 rotations on my milling machine, slowing down at the end and being careful not to go too far. I drilled the 3rd and 4th pilot holes with the quarter inch stubby drill bit using the same process. 
After the fourth pilot hole, I swapped the bit out for a 3 8 inch bit, working my way up to the final 16 millimeter side, and started the whole process all over again. Lining the bit up, removing the play, and counting the turns to get to the precise location of the next hole. With no digital readout, I counted out loud to help make sure I kept count. 5.9 Again, taking you real slow at the end to make sure I don't overshoot. 5, 6, 6 point, oh, right there. That looks pretty good. And finally, repeating the whole process again with the full-size 16mm bit. With all the holes drilled, it was time to try it out and see how I did. Okay, moment of truth. This probably did not work. But I'm going to it open again. Uh, first guess, it looks pretty good. Wow. Wow. Oh, come on. Got it. Well, that was awesome. I was honestly worried that might not fit, but came out great. Well, with the plate and other parts ready, I put the fixture together to prepare it for welding. It did have quite the complex clamping and jigging requirement around it, and welding would require a lot of tack welds combined with moving clamps and redoing more tack welds and redoing the fixture. I repeatedly checked the measurements along the way, to make sure there was no warping, and ultimately the part came out looking pretty good. I gave the part a good cleaning and then wiped it down with acetone. And then I gave it a couple of coats of bright caution yellow. I brought the completed fixture out and installed it on the table. And then I went ahead and installed the steering column fixture. This is the frame jig neck fixture kit from ChopSource.com. The only difference was I had to add a much longer 3 quarter inch threaded rod. With that front fixture mount coming out so well, I went ahead and built another copy of the whole same structure for the rear spindle mount. The rear fixture mount came out quite nice also. I painted it, brought it out, and installed it on the table. Next, I would cut two mounting plates that would hold the rear spindle and get attached to the rear fixture that I just built. I cut these out on my plasma cutter. The 3D model for these plates was provided by one of my patrons, Gianni. Here, my plasma cutter is attached actually to my CNC router. I built a mounting plate just for the plasma cutter. I'd like to build a full-size plasma cutting bed that fits on this router table, but for now I just have this 2 foot by 2 foot portable bed that's filled with wet sand, and it works quite well. When you use a computer controlled plasma cutter and you get the speeds dialed in right, the quality of the cuts is just phenomenal. It looks almost as good as if it was laser cut. Next up, I had to clean those plates up and sand them. So I had to remove the mill scale again, but this time I thought I'd try using the muriatic or hydrochloric acid. I put them in a plastic container and added enough muriatic acid to just cover them. This stuff smells pretty bad and does burn if you get it on your skin. I let the two plates soak overnight and the result honestly was phenomenal. The mill scale practically floated up as a layer off of the plates. I flipped the parts over to make sure both sides were thoroughly cleaned. After that, a thorough rinsing and hitting with the flapper disc and buffer disc, they looked great. I clamped the plates together into my benchtop milling machine and meticulously lined them up. I then drilled the four mounting holes, 
using the stubby bit to create the pilot holes and the motion of my milling machine to ensure accuracy. Longing for the day when I have a CNC milling machine. Fit testing the part on the rear fixture and it looks pretty good. My design has a very large diameter rear spindle for reasons you'll see later. It'll be held in place on this rear fixture with two large shaft collars. I place the spindle in the plates and temporarily jig up the bottom halves of the split shaft collars. I lightly clamp the shaft collars in place with C-clamps and then tap the spindle until it was perfectly horizontal while resting on the bottom halves of those shaft collars and then tightening the clamps and then removed the spindle and added more clamps so I could tack weld them into place. This is by no means a final alignment of this spindle clamp, but merely ensures it's not going to be grossly misaligned. The final alignment would take place on the table and utilize the small amount of adjustability of the plates on the vertical post. I removed the plates and clamped them tight to the fixture table for final welding. I gave them a couple coats of a nice gloss black to match the steering column fixture in the front. And with that, all the parts were completed for the front and rear fixtures, and I could start putting it all back together. I brought the bike frame back out, which I built this whole frame jig for, and with some help lifted it back up onto the table. I started by lining up the front steering column and neck fixture, inserting the threaded rod and cones which seat neatly into the tapered roller bearing sleeves on either end of the steering column. Clipping this tight forces the whole steering column assembly to be held rigidly in place. The steering column rod is angle adjustable to match the rake angle of your build and the whole assembly can be adjusted vertically up and down the post. I started reassembling the rear of the frame to get ready to mount it into the new rear spindle mount. I brought the new rear spindle mounting bracket out, slid it in place, and started lining everything up, inserting the spindle and then the upper half of the spindle mount shaft collars and tightening those down. Finally, the front and rear fixtures were all done. The frame was up on the frame jig and clamped in place. I think the result is pretty spectacular. I'm really happy with the way this came out and I'm looking forward to sharing more progress with you. I'll be sharing all the fixtures that support the frame in the next video and moving on to finishing the frame modification, then moving to mounting the engine, building the custom exhaust, and then the engine reduction cage. After that, it's pretty much on to final assembly. Well, that is it for this video. I hope you're enjoying seeing this recumbent motorcycle frame jig come to life. I don't think there's many of these out there, and I'm thrilled by the progress being made here. If you like this video or are interested in recumbent motorcycles or seeing a real life fully functional version of Canada's ride, Please subscribe and share this video and support the project by becoming a patron. I'd like to thank again my current patrons for their ongoing support. Thank you all again and see you soon.